right? You had some class prior to this. Maths. So now you're relaxed. So all your heartbeats are relaxed. Yes. What's the normal heartbeat? Seventy-two. So all your heartbeats are at seventy-two now. Same. No. Are you feeling little jittery because of that camera there? Yes. I should be feeling. No. <laughs> right. So today we'll be doing about the heart. Right. So uh, we'll be seeing what is the structure basically and uh, the functions. An outline, an overview of the structure and function of the heart. So this is a three-dimensional vision that we are getting. Normally when you see your textbook or when I draw on the board, you know, you get just a, you draw something like this, you know, which is, and many of you draw like a heart shaped and all. Heart is heart shaped, right? So which is obviously not. And we know that, uh, you know, it is composed of muscles and there are chambers and the shape is not exactly like a heart. It is tilted towards the left slightly. There are many vessels which enter and leave the heart. And you also have the circulatory system which consists of the impure, that is oxygenate, deoxygenated blood and the pure blood which is a oxygenated blood, which has a lot of oxygen, right? So all this, when you want to show the actual circulation, no, we cannot, we can only just have a two dimensional or a single dimensional view as you see in a uh, paper on the textbook. So, but we go into the module over here, we can actually visualize how circulation takes place really and what is the uh, entire three dimensional view. Now, where is the heart situated? It is in the thoracic region, okay? It's in the thoracic region in between the lungs above the diaphragm. And the heart is covered by a membrane called as the pericardium. Okay? So you have the So this is the outermost membrane called as the pericardium, inside which of course there is a small space filled with pericardial fluid. Now uh, let us see in detail the structure and what are the different parts present in the heart. Okay. how the heart pumps, how it contracts and relaxes, okay? So it is at equal intervals of time, you have the contraction and relaxation of the heart. It pumps blood, right? Heart is a pumping organ and it has specialized muscles. Now you have learnt about different types of muscles, striated muscles, unstriated or smooth muscles and cardiac muscles. So cardiac muscles are a special type of muscles which has both striations but at the same time they are involuntary in function okay so they are specialized muscles and they pump blood okay so you have repeated contractions and relaxations and that you know n number of times I just show like this with my hand I cannot actually or I'll have to go into dissection which is against the peta right so we can go in for this and you can see how it contracts and relaxes right now if you go to the next uh, mod uh, slide okay so we saw where is the location so the heart is located in the thoracic region covered by the ribs we have the diaphragm below and we have the sternum and top so it's protected on all sides with this rib cage and the apex is slightly tilted towards the left. The apex is the 
It's not the uppermost uh, part. It is the end or the tip of the heart, which is actually the lower basal region, which is tilted towards the left hand side. Now, if you divide the heart into four chambers, okay, there are four chambers in a mammalian heart or in a human heart, we have four chambers, okay. The top two chambers are called as auricles and the lower two chambers are called as ventricles. So, if I could divide this, right. So, basically it is not divided as such. We will be seeing in the next uh, slide that the auricles are much more smaller in size when compared to the ventricles, okay. And the ventricles are much more thicker. The muscles of the ventricles are much more thicker. So, but here you have the right auricle, okay, and the left auricle or the atrium and the right ventricle and the left ventricle, okay. So, these are the four chambers and the division that I showed you is the septum or a membrane which divides into different parts, alright. And what you can actually see in between the auricles and ventricles is there is a valve, there are valves present there and also valves are present at the beginning of the blood vessels, okay, which we can see when we take a cross section of the heart. circulation actually takes place. Now, if you see the right atrium, the right side of the, of the heart will receive all the impure or deoxygenated blood, okay. So, we have the superior and inferior vena cava which brings in the deoxygenated blood into the um, okay, into the right auricle and then this deoxygenated blood enters in, into the right ventricle which then enters into the which is a, a vessel which takes the deoxygenated blood pulmonary we have the pulmonary artery. So, that is the only exception. The only artery which carries deoxygenated blood is pulmonary artery. So, this is from the this deoxygenated blood is collected from various parts of a body by the veins, okay. So, by the veins and is superior and I'll just outline the entire thing here. All right. So this is uh, mm -hmm. okay. Now this is the auricles, and these are the ventricles. Okay. So the blood flows into the right side will be the deoxygenated blood and that which enters the left side and leaves the left side will be the oxygenated blood, right. So, the uh, from the auricles the blood enters into the ventricles and from the ventricles it enters into the 
pulmonary artery. Similarly, from the left side, the pulmonary veins from the lungs. Lungs will purify and oxygenate your blood and it uh, brings the pulmonary veins will bring the oxygenated blood into the auricles and from the auricles it enters into the left ventricle from there where the iota will carry it into the different parts of the heart okay so I mean different parts of the body so now if you take over here and over here right if you see in this part and in this part there will be valves all right you have the bicuspid and the tricuspid valves we'll see that later in detail so the valves the main function of the valves is to open and allow the blood to flow into the ventricles from the auricles right so these valves prevent back flow of blood if the valves are not there okay just like the opening and closing of a lid if the valves are not there the blood will flow back into the auricular chamber right so we don't want that to happen therefore the valves will close as soon as the blood is pumped inside so we will see that how it is in the next uh, can you see the how the blood is going yes Okay, so we saw how the blood flows into the different parts. From here it enters from the body into the heart and from the lungs it enters into the heart here, the purified blood and the valves help in preventing backflow of blood. Now you can see these thin lines over here, okay. So these lines which are attached from the valves to the muscles of the ventricles okay they are called as chordae tendinae which help in pulling that is contracting and relaxing of those muscles will help in opening and closing of the uh, atrioventricular atrium and auricles both mean the same can you use both the words right so that is the way in which the blood is pumped inside the heart so you have the tricuspid valve here and this is the bicuspid valve. Okay, so these tendons I told you they are called as chordae tendinae. The bicuspid valve is also called as a mitral valve. When you uh, you would have heard that lub dub sound. Always you say that lub dub sound, right? And initially, also in the first picture, we saw that dub 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 heart beating, right? So, when you uh, hear that first lub sound, that is the closure of these tricuspid and bicuspid valves. Then, when the blood enters into the iota and pulmonary artery, there are valves there also, which also again close. That is the second dub sound. So, lub sound is the closure of these valves, and the dub sound is the closure of those valves right yes iota and the pulmonary artery valves okay pulmonary arterial valve they are called as the semi lunar valves all right so this is the interior structure of the heart we'll see about the functioning of the heart in further detail in the next class are you clear with this can you just recapitulate as to what we did what we did 